I'm sorry, guys. I, I think I clicked the right one for recording, but we'll start. So this will be a new recording um, for those of you guys watching on YouTube. What you guys missed was me talking about how angles are everywhere. Um, so these girders, they make a line or they make an angle. So that's what angles are. When we're talking about tables, they usually make a 90 degree angle right here on the corners. And in some cases, they don't touch each other like in tennis courts. So next thing we're gonna do is we're talking about alternate interior angles, which is alternate meaning opposite, interior meaning the inside. So the inside would be this part, this interior. And I'll, obviously the rest is the exterior. So when we're talking about exterior angles, we're talking about, do, do, alt, well, let's do alternate interior first. So the alternate interior would be like three and six according to this. So we can see that. Another set of alternate interior angles would be four and five. Alternate exterior angles would be like one and eight. Or another set of alternate interior angles would be like two and seven. And same side interior would be this, four and six or three and five. Now we're gonna start proving those in the activity. So let me go to the activity. So here we're gonna be talking about the transversal uh, EF, and that was one thing I forgot to show you guys was EF is this line cutting it. So the transversal would be line T, this line right here, and our two parallel lines are R and S. So now when we are, it's wrong one. When we are doing this, we're gonna measure all of these angles. So when we measure it, we wanna click D, H, E, to get that angle right there. The next one we're gonna do is this angle. So we wanna go counterclockwise. So we wanna go from E to C. So make sure you have your angle measuring thing right here. I'm gonna go E, H, C. So we're gonna to wanna to measure all of these and you can move these around where it's easier to see. So I believe it's this way, because this angle is obviously bigger, so I kind of mix those up. But there we go. And we're going to keep measuring all of these. So we're going to want to record all of these. So this does take a while. So make sure you guys give yourself enough time to do this when you get to this activity. So we have this. Again, we want to move it out of the way so we don't get it confused with anything else. Angle, oh, doing it backwards. Always go from, uh, you always wanna go counterclockwise. So if you're going from G to D, you're gonna get this angle. So that's why when we measure, we start at G, H, D, that'll give us our angle. Gonna move this around. All right, cool. So, do this. We're gonna go from B, G, H. Then we're gonna go from H, G, A. So if you can see, I kind of go back like one step to do this. So here, here, and here. Wherever I leave off, I kind of just keep going and that's gonna give me all the right angles. Move our angles around. So one thing we'll notice in this activity, and I'll say it later, is you'll see that the vertical angles are congruent. I believe we already kind of mentioned this before. I honestly can't remember if we've studied this yet, but one thing we will realize is alternate exterior angles, that one relationship, this and this are the same. Alternate interior angles, for example, this one and this one are the same. Or you can say this one, and this one are the same. So they're congruent. Alternate interior angles are congruent. Alternate exterior angles are congruent. Now, when it comes to same side, 
these look like they add up to 180, and we'll get into that later. But when we're doing this, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to take our screenshot. So again, there's several ways to do this. One of the easiest is we're going to export the image. Oh, before we export the image, sorry. First way I want you guys to do it is to share. So we're going to click share. Put your name on here or something, wherever you want to put it. That way I know it's yours. It also makes it easier to kind of tell which activity we're doing. It's going to save it. It might ask you to sign up. Just use your student email to sign up using Google. So if it tells you to sign up, make sure you click on that Google. Go on here. Paste your link. Also, it helps me out a lot. You don't have to, but it does help me out a lot when you guys do. Well, your teachers more so, I should say. You export the image, download, and see how it has the same name. So that's why I like saving it first. If you save it, you don't have to rename it. You save that, go on here, go to your image. If you're lucky enough where it shows you your little download thing here, you can literally just click and drag it. And I'll do it. If not, you can always just go to choose file and do it that way. Usually you have to find it. So remember wherever you save it, that way it's easier for you to find. All right, anyways, so, so far we have this. So list the names of the X interior angles and the uh, group them together. List the names and measures of all alternate exterior angles. List them together as well. All right, so when we're talking about interior angles, alternate interior angles, we're talking about this. This one and this one are alternate interior and this and this are alternate interior. I use different colors. Usually what they would do in traditional geometry, if you only have one color, you would mark this with one line, mark this with two lines to show that they're congruent. But since I have two colors, since I have colors, I'm just going to use colors. All right, so I have to list these. So this does take a little bit of time. But what we can do to make it a little more organized is we want to list two alternate angles or a pair of alternate here, right? There's two here and two there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to list four, one for the name, and then we're going to double it, and then another one for the actual angle. So what you can do is you can insert a table and I'm going to do that. So four, and we're going to do the alternate interior angles. So if I go here, I should have done first. Let me delete. Alt int angles. You'll see me call it that a lot, alternate interior angles. I always call it alt int angles because I don't want to be bothered to list everything. So I do that. I have two pairs of them. So the first one, I'm going to put my little equation editor so I can do the little fancy little sign. And my first alternate here angle is going to be DHE. Here I'm going to put DHE. Click that one. And then my second angle for DHE. Oh, I'm sorry, DHG. I wanted the interior angle. I'm so sorry, guys. DH. Oh, I'm going to have to delete the whole thing. Angle. Angle DHG. Do that. And the next angle for DHG, the matching pair is going to be HGA. H, G, and A. So I'm going to go here. Equation editor. H, G, A. I know you guys are probably looking at this and like, oh, it's only 14 slides. 
but there is quite a bit of work that we're doing here. So I'm trying to enter my angle here. That's 103.19. So I'm going to enter 131.19. Same thing with this one, 131.19. Now, if you guys don't want to do the table, that's perfectly fine. I just thought it would be nice, and I wanted to show you guys that you can make a table. You guys can easily just do this. Um, angle BHG equals 131.19. Angle HGA equals 139.19. And you can also write down the next pair, which is CHG. So angle CHG equals 48.81. The uh, exterior angle, the other, the alternate to this interior angle would be this one. So we're going to write the exact same thing. Where is it? Ah, angle. And that angle is HGB. HGB equals 48.81. All right. So does that make sense, guys, how to do this? You can either do it on the table or you can just do it like this. Either way, it's fine, just as long as you understand what you're doing. Does that make sense? Cool. And you're going to do that for the alternate exterior angles, too. So just to make sure we have enough time in class, I'm not going to go over those, but I will label those for you. It's going to be very, very similar. Um, that's kind of why I like doing the table, because if you did the table, you can just copy and paste it and just change the names of the angles. Because, for example, if you look here, this angle is going to be the same as this angle over here. So if you copied and pasted the table, you could have changed this name into this name. And you could have changed this name right here, this uh, BGF or FGB, whichever way you want to name it. I don't care how you name it. I know which angle you're talking about. So FGB or B. So you can call it angle FGB or you can call it angle BGF. Doesn't matter. I know you're talking about this one. So you can plug that, either one of those names, into this part right here. So that's why I recommend the table because you can literally copy and paste the table. So if I did this, for example, I can do this. It's an easier way to do it. OK, there we go. Do that. See how everything's there? Control C. And I can just change these names later on if I want. Whichever way works best for you. This one, you can't really do it because when you do equation editor, it kind of makes it an image. All right. And now this one. How pairs of alternate interior angles relate to each other? So what you'll notice here is alternate interior angles are the same. They're congruent. So you're going to say that they're congruent. How do pairs of alternate exterior angles relate to each other? They're congruent. So that's what it means by using geometry terms. You're not going to say they're the same. You're going to say alt, ah, alternate interior angles are congruent. Same thing with alternate exterior angles. You'll notice that this angle and this angle are congruent as well. So alternate exterior angles are also congruent. 
So that's what I wanted you to learn from that part. Now we're going to list all pairs of same side interior angles and their sum. They want us to add it together. So again, you guys can do this in either a table. So we can do a table doing it or what I would do is just write it down if you want, however you want to do it. I'll do the first one. So if I'm doing the same side, same side interior angles, I'm going to go to my equation editor. I'm going to say pairs of measures. So I'm going to say angle F, or I'm sorry, F, DHG. So DHG, I'm going to say angle DHG is equal to 139.19, 131.19. I'm sorry, I know I say the wrong thing sometimes. I'm sorry for you auditory learners. I, I don't know why I always say the wrong letters. I kind of get it a little backwards sometimes. And the next angle is HGB, HGB, HGB. And this number, let me focus really hard to say it right, 48.81. 48.81, and it wants us to add them together. So what I would do is I'm lazy, so I just copy this, paste it, put a little plus sign, copy this, paste it, equals. If I added these two together, I'm going to pull out a calculator. So I'm going to do 131.19, 48.81, it equals 180. That's how I would do this. And it wants us to describe the relationship in terms of geometry. Well, when two angles equal 180, they're supplementary. So same side, same side interior I forgot how to spell interior angles are supplementary that's a word they're looking for when they're saying say it in terms of geometry so there are going to be some times where you guys have to study the vocabulary if it ever gets to the point where you guys need to um, I'll show you guys how to print out the worksheets. That way you guys have the, that vocabulary somewhere. Sometimes it helps to have those tangible things, um, like a piece of paper that'll tell you the vocabulary. So the next thing they want us to do is they want us to move CD. Do the relationships change? If so, how? All right, so what we're gonna do is I am going to need to hide all of these. I want to, oh, actually, I don't want to hide it. So what do they want me to do? Uh, da, 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 a, B, now move point E, F, transversal does not cross A, B, and that point E does not exist. How do the relationships cross? A, B, E, F, doesn't cross it? I think that's what it means. That's really weird. Okay. Now move E, F around to change the orientation of transversal. Be sure. That F doesn't cross. Okay. So it's saying just do this, but make sure this doesn't happen. Okay. So if we look here, let's kind of look at our angle relationships again. I'm going to move back in. All right. Cool. So if we look here, these two are still congruent. Our alternate interior angles, these two, let me use my little laser pointer. 
So this angle and this angle, our alternate interior angle, are still congruent. Our alternate x or alternate interior angles here are also congruent. Our alternate exterior angles, this angle and this angle, are still congruent. And this angle and this angle are still congruent as well. So the benefit of this is that now we know that these angles are always congruent. So if I know what this is, I know what this angle is right off the bat. Um, and if we add our, our same side interior angles together, let's check this out. Are these still supplementary? 1.88 plus 53.12, they're still supplementary. So no, the relationship of these angles has not changed. All right, so it hasn't changed. It's still the same thing. Move point A to a different location to change the orientation of the parallel lines. So we want to make sure that these aren't parallel anymore. So we're going to move A so they're not parallel. But we can't, oh, these are set to always be parallel. So even if we move these around, the lines are still parallel. They just change differently. So, so move it around. Do the relationship change? So even, even when the orientation of the line, orientation just means like how it is. So change the orientation. So change how it looks. Even when we change the orientation of the lines, it's they are still parallel the lines the uh, angle relationships relationships do not change so this is just a fancy way of saying that just because these change these angles are still related in the same way they're still congruent Still congruent. Uh, let me move it a little more this way. You can't really see it. It's just really tiny, but the angles would still be congruent. So if I look, let me move over here. So if I look, this is still congruent to that. It's just, I don't know why GeoGebra kind of makes it look weird. If I zoom in, you can see that's better. I don't know why it does that. It's very weird. Uh, but the relationship, the measurement is still the same. So what we should have learned from this is that alternate interior angles are congruent, alternate exterior angles are congruent, but same side interior angles equal 180. They're supplementary. So now what we're going to do here, so this again is stating the same thing. If two lines are parallel, so they have to be parallel, then the angle relationships are the same. Is this making sense, guys? You guys there? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to look at what how to do a proof. So the way you do a proof, I've seen some students, they just put it in randomly. Please try to like understand what's going on. So first things first, what do they tell us? Well, they're going to tell us that these two lines are parallel. So we're going to say that lines R and line S are parallel and they're cut by that transversal. So that's all we're doing. We're literally just telling them what they already told us. That's our given. Now that we have this fact, now that we know that they're parallel, we can start drawing conclusions from it. So corresponding angle theorem. So according to corresponding angles, what we learned before, corresponding angles just means if we take this angle to, so where's my pen? Oh, I lost my pen. 
There it is, hiding under my keyboard. So this angle and this angle are corresponding because I took two and I moved it over to make six. So I need to look for corresponding angles. So let's take a look here. We're going to compare the angles that we have. So three and seven, three and seven, those look like corresponding. Four and eight, four and eight, those look like corresponding as well because it looks like I took four, moved all of these angles over and made this. So this three and four turned into our seven and eight. That's what it means by corresponding. The corresponding angles are congruent. So I'm going to cut this, the corresponding angles. So that one worked out. Vertical angles. So this is what we studied before, that these two angles right here across from each other. Um, so for example, oh, I turned this off. Our two and three are vertical, one and four are vertical, seven and six are vertical, and five and eight are vertical. So according to this, which one of these are vertical? So four and five are alternate interior. So that doesn't work. So let's try seven and six. Seven and six, five and eight. Okay, so those are our vertical angles. So vertical angles are congruent. These two are congruent because of this theorem. And the next one is transitive property of congruency. This one's a little weird. Um, I don't think we've really studied this. So they kind of just leave it there for you to assume it. But what it is, if we look at our diagram, is it's saying, since we know that three, let me get my laser. Since we know that three is the same as seven and seven is six, we can just say that three and six are congruent. All right, so we already know that this is congruent to this one because it's corresponding. We just move this one over and boom, it worked. And we know that these two are congruent because of vertical angles. So we can say that alternate interior angles are congruent because of these two things. Because we know that corresponding angles are congruent, and we know that vertical angles are congruent, we can say that alternate interior angles are congruent. That's what they're doing here to do the proof. All right, and then our next one, perpendicular bisectors. So the definition of a perpendicular bisector is this idea that, let me use my laser, is that we have a bisector. Bisect means cut in half. Cut in half. So if it's a bisector, then that means AC has to be equal to CB because it's bisecting it. It's cutting it in half. Perpendicular means 90 degrees. So this means we have a line cutting it right in half at 90 degrees. All right? So that's why it's saying that AB is cut in half. All right, so moving on to this one. So now we're going to talk about how to do this. So in the diagram, so let's open our diagram. Let me close this now. Uh, so in our diagram, we have these. And this says in the diagram, blah, 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 create AC and BC measurements of the lengths and compare. So we want to compare these lengths. So BC. Oh, okay, create these lines. So this means we're going to create the line segment. It doesn't say create line segment because it's like, hey, I put a little line on top. That means you have to make it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a line segment. If it had arrows, it would be a line, but since they're not. So this is kind of starting to use our notation together. We already knew that there were line segments, but now it's like, we're not even going to tell you it's a line segment. You have to know that it's a line segment. So now we're going to go from B to C, and then, or I'm sorry, A to C, and then B to C. 
And now it wants us to measure it. So we want to measure these angles. So we can do two things. We can go to our little measuring tool and click A to C, or I can just do this. The other option would have been to go, I know this is B, oh, B, F. That's not what I wanted to do, undo. Uh, so we want to measure this. So I'm going to click the little dot, make sure I click the dot and it measures it, but this time it labels it. So it labels it nicer if you do it that way. If you don't want that label or you're just too lazy to click them, you can just click that line. The other way is a little better because it labels it for you, I think. But if you literally just want the information, you can just do this. Um, ba -ba -ba. How do the links compare? So first of all, just to make sure we have proof, always share. Any work you ever have to do, just share it. You can just label this problem one if you want with your name. Save it, let it save. Well, that one took forever to save. Paste it. And then we're going to answer the question. How do these lengths compare? The lines are congruent. So these two lines are congruent. Simple enough. Slide point C along the perpendicular bisector and decrease or increase this. All right, so let's check this out. So I'm going to go to move. I'm going to move this. And we see that the measurements follow it. They're still congruent. So this tells us that any point on here is going to be equidistant, meaning that they have the same lengths. So if I do this, it's like, oh, they don't change. They stay the same size. All right. So this, so we go back here. So how does the relationship of their lengths change? They don't. They have the same size. So the relationship in length does not change. They are still the same length. So this is how uh, Admentum teaches geometry. You kind of have to write something in and then it's going to tell you what you should have learned from it after you've already learned it. So that's why I think this class is a little harder. So from here on out, it's really important to kind of pay attention to how we're learning it. And then this one is create line segment BD and we're going to do the same thing. So this time it's on the opposite side of the line. So I'm going to create the line segments. And they want me to measure it. So I'm going to measure the lengths. So they're at 5, just how C was initially at 5, but then I moved it around. Uh, da, da, da. Move it along the perpendicular bisector. I'm going to move this around. Boop, boop, boop. Still congruent. So line or point. E is the same distance as A as it is to B. And I'm saying this a little differently. I could have said it exactly the same way. I'm just showing you guys how there's different ways of saying the same thing. So over here, I could have just said, oh, uh, they're congruent. This one, I'm just saying the distance is the same. So these line segments are congruent. But I can also say the distance from D to B is the same. The distance from A to D is the same. This line, measuring this line, is the same thing as measuring the distance. A straight line is how you measure distance. So finally, piece together what we've learned from this, from AF and BF. So AF and BF. What? So 
So to, to, to finally place a point anywhere on the screen, not perpendicular. Oh, so I'm just creating a point and I'm going to put it like here. And now we're going to create these line segments. We're going to click A, click F, click B, click F. We're going to measure these. We'll make sure we're on distance, measure it, measure it. And the thing they want us to notice is see how they're not the same. These two points are not the same distance unless they're on the perpendicular bisector. And it's really hard for me to match it up. That's why you see a little bit of difference because I'm human. I can't perfectly do it. I barely did it right there and I'm pretty sure I can't keep it up. Nope, can't keep it up. <laughs> the computer's really good because it's like I can't, no matter what I do here, it's gonna stay perpendicular. So what do we notice here? Ba -ba -ba. Now select point F. Where must you locate point F for them to be equal? In order for AF and BF to be equal, they must lie on the perpendicular sector. Sorry guys, I know I'm not the best typer or speller, <laughs> but geometry has a lot of words. So in order for them to be congruent, they have to lie on the perpendicular bisector. And then just rate this on how you did. And that's what it's going to teach us here. It says that any point on a perpendicular bisector, meaning anything that's here and in the middle, is going to be equidistant that word right here, equidistant, meaning that they're the same lengths. So that's our takeaway from this. All right, so let's do our proof. So this is a long proof. <laughs> Given that CD is perpendicular to AB, so do they give us a picture? Ah, they do. So always look at your picture, guys, because it's really hard to understand what to do if you don't see the picture. So it's going to say that CD is perpendicular to AB. So that's our given. So that should be the first thing we put down here. So CB, so da, 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 let's see here, angle P, where's the one that says they're perpendicular? Ah, there it is. This little line right here, see how this little upside down T, that means perpendicular. So if you ever see this little thing, think perpendicular. So perpendicular bisector. Any point CD is equidistant to that point. So this is what we try to prove. So this should be the last thing we have. So we can kind of cheat and say, oh, if that's the last thing we want to say, we should probably put that down somewhere. So if I look here, I'm saying that CD, any point on CD. So in that case, I'm saying that like CB is congruent to CA, or I can say that DB, but here's a problem. I only have P's, but that's fine. Probably somewhere in here, oops, PA, PE, what's this E? Oh, PA, PB, there we go. So we're saying that P, so we're doing that. So this is kind of what we're trying to prove. We'll see later on that we're making up a point. So here it's like defining an arbitrary point. So that's why we're using P's, is it's saying that let P be a point on there. So that's why it's going to end up with PA and BA. So let's see how we get there. You guys don't have to do this little cheating way. I just, I'm just like, well, if, I have to prove that. I know it's the last thing. So might as well put it in the last thing already. Uh, the next thing it says, define a perpendicular bisector. Well, a perpendicular bisector is when the angles made are 90 degrees. When this angle, angle P, so I'm going to make up an, a point. 
I have this little stand for my pen and I always put it in a different spot. There we go. So angle P, so it's a point. It's saying that this angle is perpendicular. That's all it's trying to say. So if I put a point P, this angle is perpendicular, this angle is perpendicular to there. So let me leave my point P right here so you guys can visually see that. All right, now according to this, the transitive property, the transitive property of equality, oops, I shouldn't move this too much. I forgot it doesn't move with that, is saying that other things are congruent. So by the transitive property, if they both equal 90 degrees, then the angle measurements have to equal each other. All right. So since they're both equal, now we're going to do the definition of an angle bisector. Uh, so the definition of an angle bisector is saying that AE, AE is perpendicular to that. So I'm going to say that, where is it? Oh, there we go. AE and BE. Sorry, I couldn't see that one. So those are congruent because of the definition of a perpendicular bisector. So why are these congruent? Because it's a perpendicular bisector. Duh. Why does this equal this? The transitive property? If this angle equals 90 degrees and this angle equals 90 degrees, then they have to equal each other. Instead of equally 90 degrees, just make it equal to each other. Reflective property. Reflective property is this idea that it equals itself. So PE is equal to PE. That's a reflective property. Whenever you see reflective property, that just means that they're the same. Why does PE equal PE? Reflective property. It doesn't seem like you have to prove it, but it's going to help. The reason why is the next reason that we're going to do. We're going to say that this triangle is equal to this triangle. And how can we, how are we allowed to say that? Well, it's this idea that this angle is equal to this angle and this angle equals itself. So we're going to say that these two triangles equal each other. Why? Because it's side, angle, side. I have to have two pairs of sides, this side and this side, and this side and itself to be equal. That's why this step, it seems pointless, but you can't use side angle side unless you have two sides. That's why you have these sides and these sides. So because of corresponding parts of corresponding uh, angles, I'm going to use that information to say that this side is equal to this side. So we're proving why this works. So I know that was long and boring, and proofs are long and boring, but does that kind of make sense why they're equal? Cool. It, said, it takes a while getting used to proofs, but these are our takeaways, guys. So always make sure you understand the takeaways. Look at the picture and try to see if you understand this and this after a tutorial. That way, when you take your mastery test, you guys are all good to go. All right, so again, everybody, make sure you're answering this question on the chat. If you guys need help fi finding the chat, give me a second. Ah, if you go to right here, click it, chat's right there. And the question for today, if you guys came late, was discovered a beautiful island uh, where you decide to build a new society. What is the first rule you put in place? answer whatever you want. I put no stealing. Someone from another class said no cars. Someone said no loitering, uh, no violence, all that other stuff. And as soon as you guys answer that, you guys are free to go. No problem, Daniel. Have a good one. Later. 
Like being around you. 